I'm Catherine Canizzo, and I'm a research assistant professor at the Simon Center for Geometry and Physics. I've always been a visual person, and I think as a child, I enjoyed uh, mathematical puzzles, um, optical illusions, uh, and I would say I've always had an affinity for, for mathematics. Um, I do geometry now, so I think that visual aspect has carried through. And uh, I would play this game called The Logical Journey of the Zumbinis, which is actually very mathematical. Um, a lot of, uh, it uses a lot of patterns and puzzles and you have to be able to identify them to get through each of the levels. Yeah. I would say I became serious about mathematics as a career in my last year in undergrad. Um, I did one of those uh, REUs, uh, research experience for undergrads. I did one at Penn State. And I think that's probably the closest research type experience I'd had um, that was looking back the most similar to like what research is like in grad school and, and after. And I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the learning. I enjoyed thinking in depth about mathematics a lot. I enjoyed working with other people. So I would say um, that was after my third year in undergrad uh, when I did that. So the kind of math that I do, uh, well, I have an elevator pitch, which is like a couple minutes for the, the general public, which is, um, if you think about uh, surfaces, so things, you know, two-dimensional, like the surface of the sphere or surface of, of a coffee mug, that's classified by the, the number of holes. So if it's, if it's a closed surface, a sphere has no holes, a, a bagel, um, you know, which is, if you deform it as the same thing as a coffee mug that has one hole, you can smush two bagels together that has two holes. So if uh, you give me a surface, I give you a number, and you automatically know what surface that you started out with was by that single number. So it, it's an invariant of the surface. Um, and I work on understanding uh, invariants for higher dimensional um, spaces. So I, I work in the field of uh, symplectic geometry. Once you go into higher dimensions, there's a lot of, there's a lot, a lot of uh, geometry, and so I focus in symplectic geometry, um, which is uh, one way that it's thought of is as uh, phase space. So if you have a particle moving um, under a potential and it has a position and it has momentum, that's an example of a um, symplectic uh, ma manifold. So a manifold is like a geometric space. And um, there's a tool for understanding symplectic manifolds called mirror symmetry. So like looking in the mirror. And it basically says that there are pairs of manifolds that have properties um, on one that correspond to a different set of properties on the other. One is more well known and the other one is less known. So you sort of get information about the lesser known, the symplectic side for free. Uh, based on the algebraic side, which is the uh, mirror. That's that's what I'm working on. <laughs> Where to start? <laughs> um, I would say that one of my first struggles, big struggles, was as an undergraduate. At the time, didn't realize it, but I had a lot of imposter syndrome, and it was I would describe it as pretty crushing, actually. <laughs> um, I went to my undergrad in England, and when I first got there, I thought, like, why am I, why am I going here? Like, you know, what, I don't belong here. Um, I had applied to a bunch of colleges, and when I got an offer from them, I thought, I can't pass up this opportunity. This is like an amazing opportunity to go study in another country, and I'm, I'm glad I did. Um, but at the time, it was really hard. There are exams at the end of the year, so you study for the entire year, and then you have like three or four days of exams, and all of your, um, with exception of some computational projects, all the, the weight of your grade is on those exams. Um, 
and I, I felt uncomfortable talking about math with people. Um, and I felt like I was really quiet and that wasn't going to hold up for well in the future. And I think in time I learned that if I am myself as authentically as possible, then I do the best math. And when I realized that it, everything got a lot better. <laughs> um, let's see in graduate school. I mean, grad school is hard. I think no matter what <laughs> it's, you know, you're working on this problem for many years and it feels good when it's done, but it's, um, I would say the hardest part for me actually is a bit on a personal level, but I, I um, realized that I'm, I'm a lesbian, I'm gay. <laughs> um, and I, I came out in my fifth year of, of graduate school. And that was like super hard. I, I say there's like sound body, sound mind and sound soul and the first two I think I had thought about a lot, but the grad school was really like me coming into my own, the grad school experience. So then things again got exponentially a lot better after that. So I would say basically just being myself <laughs> and realizing who that was, um, those were the struggles that I dealt with. Well, I submitted my first paper to a journal and the referee sent some comments and I sent them back with the comments incorporated. And so I'm hoping I'll get my first paper published. <laughs> I would have to say my parents, I know that's probably an answer a lot of people would give. Um, they really did so much for me growing up. Um, my mother coached my math club when I was in school and really supported me um, through undergrad, as did my father. Um, they are both scientists, and my dad, my mom's a science fiction author now. My dad worked at NASA, um, and I think I would not be where I am today without them. They were just, have been very much my role models growing up, and I, I lost my father a couple of years ago, which was really difficult, and I think the one silver lining is I'm really grateful I see how, how much they gave me now that I don't have him. There are a couple faculty that have been really inspiring. Uh, Katrin Berheim is at UC Berkeley. Um, they're a faculty member there who's very openly out and in symplectic geometry. And um, my advisor, Dania Rue, really supported me a lot through grad school with helping me out mathematically and helping me network. And so I would, I, I was trying to think of two non-parent people to say, so <laughs> those are two of them. Let's see, words of wisdom, I would say, be yourself, figure out who you are and then be that person. One of the most useful pieces of advice I got was at actually the uh, this conference called U-STARS. It's underrepresented students in topology and algebra research symposium. And um, one of the speakers there, uh, Chelsea Walton, I remember gave a one of the, I think like pl pl plenary talks, one of the, the main talks about her experiences um, as a mathematician and one of the first things she said was get your personal life figured out <laughs> and that was like a very um, true and helpful so I would say pass that advice on um, because if people just say be yourself you know sometimes you don't know what that is and other word of advice would be if you ever feel like you don't belong then don't assume that you don't belong. The environment is probably, there's some, probably something wrong with the environment that's telling you that. It's not you, it's the world around you. So I think those are my words of advice. Mm -hmm. <laughs>